in you too. Oh, oh my God.
apart from the fact that he has rich alluvial soils for agriculture, it also has very wonderful flora and fauna. The lions, the zebras, the tigers. Now, these people are so warm and so gentle. Unfortunately, a Belgian ruler, Leopold II, found his way into the area and subjected the people to dehumanization. In fact, our hero for today, Otabenga, was born along the Kasai River. He would climb the mountains, descend the hills, get into the jungles for hunting. He was a master hunter. Otabenga was a pygmy. In fact, now the pygmies are normally very short. They look like dwarfs, but they are normal people. Some people say they suffer from dwarfism, but that is their unique nature as well. They are not suffering from any dwarfism. That is their nature. My brother, my sister, he belonged to the ethnic group known as the Mbuti, M-B-U-T-I, or Tabenga. Or Tabenga, by the age of 17, already got married. Very fertile. He impregnated his wife. And in no time, they had two children. Right after the birth of the second child, trouble started knocking on his door. Now, when you look at the photograph that my producer has posted, those of you in the class and those of you on Twitter and Facebook, you will see the teeth of Otabenga. It's a cultural thing done by the Mbuti people, the pygmies known as the Mbuti. They will sharpen their teeth using sharp objects like stones so they can chew better. They love to chew meat. So they sharpen their teeth in the form of the teeth of the lion so they can gobble the meat, tear the meat, break the bones. That's why his teeth are like this in this photograph. They are not natural. They sharpen their teeth with stones. And that is what all Mbuti people do. And it's also a sign of sexiness. Now, when you see their teeth, they love to smile at you the way you see him smiling here. And when the women see that, oh my God, they are blown away. Beautiful teeth. Today, we're talking about Otabenga. Otabenga, after he gave birth to his second child, You'll see him small like this. At this point, he already had two children. But you will see him like a 14-year-old boy. Now, there's a Hausa proverb I would like to share with you. It says, Gajere ba yaruba. Gajere ba yaruba. Akwatietia. Nipatietia nyakwala. Short and small as you see him here. Gajere ba yaruba. Nipatietia nyakwala. This is a 32-year-old man standing there like a 14-year-old, a wife and two children. Oh, my God. Now, see what happened to our hero, Otabenga. My brother, my sister, in 1904, Kwame Nkrumah was negative five years young. Otabenga decided to go out on a hunting expedition, as he always did leaving behind his wife and children. At that time, the wicked Belgian king, King Leopold II, yes, King Leopold II, had already taken over the whole of the Congo and named the Congo after himself. Remember, the Congo was called Leopoldville. He named it after himself. After independence, they changed it to King Shasha. In fact, he took the whole of the Congo as his own personal property, not even the property of Belgium, as his own backyard garden. And he forced the indigents, the Umbutis, and the rest of them to go out there and bring him rubber and gold. 
those who failed to bring that, he cut the hands of their wives. Now show me photographs of the hands cut by Leopold II in the Congo. You are going to see photographs of women and men whose hands were cut by King Leopold II, all because their husbands were not able to bring rubber and gold. That was how wicked he was. He formed an army known as Force Public. That's public force. And that army was used to terrorize the people of the Congo. Now, as an Umbuti, these are the photographs. Now you see the hands of men and women cut. Now, if your husband goes out there to bring rubber or gold to King Leopold, and he wasn't able to do that, the wife will be arrested and they will cut your hand at the risk level. Yes, the wrist level. Your husband will be asked to go back. If he's not able to bring it back the second time, they will cut the whole arm off. Third time, if he wasn't able to bring rubber or gold, they will decapitate your wife. That was what King Leopold did. I wish today we could talk about King Leopold, but I do not want to digress because his history is a very terrible one. Oh my God. Now, if you haven't read the book, The Ghost of King Leopold, you need to find it and read it, but be ready to cry. Give me the cat. This is the class. Yabo! Yabo! Ortabenga in 1904 went on a hunting expedition to bring game to his wife and children. How dare? He went and he was able to catch an antelope. And coming home, he realized that his wife did not come out to meet him. Because a few meters to his house, he had a way of whistling so that his wife would know that, oh, he had come home with game and she would rush out with the children to welcome him. That was how he whistled. Papi, 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 papi. That was how he whistled. Uniquely. But this time, he whistled and whistled. Wife didn't come out. Children didn't come out. And when he went opening his room, he saw that his wife had been killed alongside his two children. Oh, my God. He went into a fit of rage, very mad and angry. Before he realized he was captured by slave traders, local slave traders. And they carried him away in chains. Small as he was, he could not defend himself. Now on the way, they sold him to an American historian and a slave trader. My brother, my sister, they sold him to him. And he bought him. He was called Samuel Phillips Verner. Samuel Phillips Verner was building a human zoo in America. He was building a human zoo where he was uh, planning to take Africans in so that people would come and pay and look at Africans and call them monkeys. At the time, he had only one orangutan. You know what an orangutan is? Producer, put up the photograph of an orangutan. The spelling of an orangutan. O R A N G U T A N. It's a certain kind of monkey. Put up the photograph. Students, orangutan. When Samuel was captured by the local slave traders, in fact, he bought Otabenga from the local slave traders and sent him all the way to America. First, they put him in a Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis, Missouri. And he was put as an exhibit in a human zoo. 
1906 at the Bronze Zoo in New York. They put him in the same cage as an orangutan. That's an orangutan there. So he was put in the same cage as this orangutan. You see? And people paid money to come and look at Otabenga and the orangutan. Now put up a photograph of Otabenga in the zoo. You will see him in the zoo. This is an orangutan. And he was put in a cage with this orangutan. And people paid money to come and watch Otabenga in the human zoo. Africans were not happy with this. They were sad and all that. Put up another photograph of Otabenga in the zoo, not in this cage. And we would like you to have a look at this. Otabenga at the Bronx Zoo. My brother, my sister, it was a painful thing. Human rights activists, black human rights activists fought against it in America. And Otabenga was ultimately freed and sent into the custody of a man, in fact, called Robert Stuart Makata. And Makata also gave him out. By law, so that some other people could take a better care of him. My brother, my sister, what did they do? They decided to saw back his teeth. His teeth were sawed back. And after the teeth were sawed back, they decided to give him American clothes to wear. They gave him to a school that taught him how to speak English. But anytime he talk, taught about his wife and children back in Africa, he couldn't take it. In 1914, he tried to return to the Congo, but a war broke up and he couldn't go. Two years later, he was so depressed, he committed suicide. He couldn't take it anymore. Put in zoos. That is who we are talking about, Otabenga. This is Otabenga. And Otabenga here poses with an orangutan, a baby orangutan, that he was put in the zoo with. Otabenga. My brother, my sister, committed suicide in 1916. Say, our son, he's finished. He died. Today, we remember the atrocities meted out to one of our own. We remember the atrocities meted out by people who claim today that they are so democratic and so civilized. They carried us and put us in zoos with orangutans chimpanzees and gorillas. They put us in exhibition zoos where people paid to come and watch us. We will find time and also talk about Sarah Batman, the woman with the huge botox who caused a stir in France and some other countries like that, also put in a human zoo. But today we're going to concentrate on Otabenga. Benga. Otabenga died at the age of 32. Otabenga never lived to get back to his beautiful country of Africa, Congo. Today we remember Otabenga. Oh, Papa. Papa Uninyaminko Wate. Papa Uninyaminko. Oh, Papa. It's Uninyaminko Wate. Oh, Papa. Uninyaminko, Papa. He died. He died in 1916 on the 20th day of March. 
and he died in Lynchburg, Virginia. He couldn't take it anymore. Oh, Otabenga. Oh, Otabenga. Damir Fadwe. Damir Fadwe. Damir Fadwe. Oh, Otabenga. Messi Menubeko. Menubeko. If you happen to be in America, find time and go to Lynchburg in Virginia. Right there at the White Rock Cemetery lies the remain, the mortal remain of Otabenga. May his body, mind, and soul rest in perfect peace as we remember him today, O oh Papa. Hey, a human being put in the same cage as orangutans and chimpanzees. A human being turned into an animal for people to pay and come and watch. Oh, what a barbaric world. Oh, Papa. Mr. Damir Fadwe Wate. Mr. Papa Wabre. Papa Wabre Wate. Papa Daye, 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 Daye. Unia Minko. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, how would the story of Otabenga impact your own life in contemporary times? In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know what to do, do. Be an anio lea mini obafe, ye zunda kagane, me zaka yini, ye ampa bangu, bokaya nan, fifia yinya, no kaina wo. Bana ehu, ebe den, lele and jima singa be kone, lele and jima singa beri, is been. The African history class. And my name, Black Rasta. And today, we've been talking about the sad life of Otabenga, the Mbuti pygmy, who was taken all the way from the banks of the Kasai River, from the beautiful mountains, hills, and valleys of the Congo into slavery. Oh, Papa, the Yewate. <laughs>